People generally forget the mistakes of the past. Citizens who are caught up in Hitler's Nazi Germany hardly notice the gradual development of extremism, mainly due to high emotions and dazzling propaganda. But history often repeats itself. FEMA plastic coffins, detention centres, armoured checkpoints and armoured military vehicles for civil purposes are well-documented facts. And witnesses who have worked for the United States military claim stores of guillotines located in Fort Lewis military facility. The latest revelation of Obamacare sanctions death by guillotine, code ICD-9E978. However, Obama was only following the mandate of the World Health Organization, one of the specialized agencies under the United Nations. Is the United States government getting ready for a fascist quasi-dictatorship involving forced religion? It would not be the first time that fascism and counterfeit Christianity have merged. Fascism and Catholicism have become synonymous throughout history. Recent developments have seen so-called Protestantism clasping hands with the Vatican. Protestantism once meant protesting against the Roman Catholic Church and her doctrine, labelling the Pope as the Antichrist as the reformers proclaimed during the Reformation. An ex-Jesuit priest, Dr. Alberto Rivera, explains. In America, the Vatican's agents were at work to wipe out the Protestant movement through ecumenism. The secret sign to be given to the Jesuits worldwide when this was accomplished by the Vatican was when a President of the United States took his oath of office facing an obelisk, a four-sided pillar that resembled the Washington Monument and the one in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. For the first time in history, the swearing-in ceremonies were moved to the west front of the Capitol and President Reagan faced the Washington Monument on January the 20th, 1981. For those who are unfamiliar with the Jesuit order, it was the Catholic answer to counteract the Reformation sparked in 1517. Loyola Ignatius's formula for the formation of the Jesuits was approved by Pope Paul III in 1540. Napoleon Bonaparte had this to say about the Jesuit order. The Jesuits are a military organization, not a religious order. Their chief is the general of an army, not the mere father abbot of a monastery. And the aim of this organization is power. Power in its most despotic exercise. Absolute power, universal power, power to control the world by the volition of a single man. Jesuitism is the most absolute of despotisms, and at the same time the greatest and most enormous of abuses. The general of the Jesuits insists on being master, sovereign, over the sovereign. Wherever the Jesuits are admitted, they will be masters, cost what it may. Their society is by nature dictatorial, and therefore it is the irreconcilable enemy of all constituted authority. Every act, every crime, however atrocious, is a meritorious work, if committed for the interest of the society of the Jesuits or by the order of the general. The Vatican has historically used civil powers in past ages as she does today. Kings, dictators, presidents and prime ministers bow and scrape to the most powerful and richest organisation on the planet, because it is politically expedient to do so. The Roman Catholic Church is secretly tightening her grip on geopolitics and the autonomy of nations who are secretly serving the Pope. Pope John Paul II and President Reagan worked together bringing about the collapse of the Soviet Union, with the first blow being the breaking down of the Berlin Wall. After years of the Vatican being accused of being un-American, the United States and the Holy See announced the establishment of diplomatic relations on January the 10th, 1984, under the Reagan administration. The Senate confirmed William A. Wilson as the first US ambassador to the Holy See. The alliance between the United States and the Vatican benefited both political powers. The Cold War and Marxist atheism made the Vatican and the United States unlikely bed partners. As US presidents are well aware of the authority the Vatican wields, with just over 1.1 billion Catholics spread throughout the world, Jesuit educational facilities also spread and indoctrinate both Catholic and non-Catholic students with Jesuit maxims around the world shaping the minds of future leaders so the Vatican is truly a force to be reckoned with. Some idea of the real estate and other forms of wealth controlled by the Catholic Church may be gathered by the remark of the New York Catholic Conference, namely that his church probably ranks second only to the United States government in total annual purchase. Another statement, made by a nationally syndicated Catholic priest, is perhaps even more telling. 
The Catholic Church, he said, must be the biggest corporation in the United States. We have a branch office in every neighborhood. Our assets and real estate holdings must exceed those of Standard Oil, AT&T and US Steel combined. And our roster of Jews paying members must be second only to the tax rolls of the United States government. Avro Manhattan. The Central Intelligence Agency was the creation of Roman Catholic Knight of Malta member Alan Dulles. In recent years, CIA NSA directors have been Catholic Jesuit educated men. Historically, the confessional was the biggest intelligence gathering machine of the Vatican. But now electronic surveillance has superseded the confessional as the single most effective tool of modern times, given the edge on business, politics and religion. A Catholic has first duty to the Pope before loyalty to a king, queen or country. Perhaps this is why many misgivings are expressed about Roman Catholics holding positions that pertain to national security. Furthermore, we declare, we proclaim, we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman Pontiff, Pope Boniface. The Roman Catholic Church has always been savvy influencing armies to do her bidding because wars cost money. Let's take a look at the leaders that the Vatican has used in the past to achieve her religio-political ends. King Clovis I, who united the barbarian tribes that eventually became the Franks, and then enforced the rule of the Roman Catholic Church during the decline of Rome after Emperor Constantine moved the capital of the Roman Empire to Constantinople. King Charlemagne enforced Catholicism and was then crowned emperor by Pope Leo III at Christmas in 800 AD. King Charles IX ordered the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of the Huguenots, French Calvinist Protestants, beginning on the 23rd of August 1572 in mostly Catholic Paris. King Philip II of Spain ordered the Spanish Armada to invade Protestant England in 1588. Dr. Alberto Rivera, an ex-Jesuit priest, also gives us information on the rise of Adolf Hitler. Another great inquisition was about to begin. Instead of wearing Dominican robes, they were wearing Nazi uniforms. Hitler's brown shirts, called the Nazis, back to the Vatican, used the same tactics of Mussolini beating and bullying opposition into submission, including Roman Catholics. Dr. Alberto Rivera. Hitler's book Mein Kampf was ghost-written by Jesuit priest Father Steinfeld. When it became known that Pope Pius XI supported Hitler, the Roman Catholic vote swept Hitler into power in 1933. Jesuit Father Himmler, an uncle of Heinrich Himmler, was a favourite of Jesuit Father General Count Halk von Litokowski. The SS organisation had been constituted by Himmler. According to the principles of the Jesuit order, the regulations and spiritual exercises prescribed by Ignatius Loyola were the model Himmler tried to copy exactly. Himmler's title as Supreme Chief of the SS was to be the equivalent of the Jesuit General. The whole structure was a close imitation of the Catholic Church's hierarchical order. Walter Schellenberg Munich University was founded with papal approval in 1472 and was previously the University of Ingolstadt. Eventually becoming a stronghold of the Jesuit order, the university also became the centre of the Counter-Reformation. Jesuit Petrus Canisus was the rector of the university. Both Adam Weishaupt, the founder of the Illuminati, and Pope Benedict XVI were educated here. Interesting enough is that Pope Benedict XVI was a member of Hitler Youth. Joseph Mengel was an SS Nazi doctor, who also was educated at the Jesuit-controlled Munich University. Mengel identified himself as a Catholic and assigned himself to Nazi Germany's Racial Purity Project which reached its climax at Auschwitz. He was called Uncle Mengel by the children whom he handed lollies to. Sadly, they were experimented on a short time later. The inmates who suffered at the hands of Mengel often died from shock and infection. In 1933, communications between the Nazis and the Vatican were welcomed by the Vatican Secretary of State, Eugenio Cardinal Pacelli, a former papal diplomat to Berlin. During an elaborate ceremony on July the 20th, 1933, a concordant between the Holy See and the German Reich was officially signed and sealed by Vice-Chancellor Franz von Papen and Cardinal Pacelli. Hitler had a dream of a one-world government. Like many other Machiavellian men of past and present times, the Vatican will covertly support anyone 
whom they think will have a credible chance of unifying the world under one political umbrella so that the Vatican can force their apostate religion on others. The Guardian reported, as well as other sources, collaboration between the Nazis and the Vatican, helping war criminals escape the end of World War II. Dictator of Spain, General Franco, who championed the causes of Catholicism fighting communism, using torture and execution to crush enemies or dissenters. While many are distracted by the false front of Zionism, the Roman Catholic Church has infiltrated and commandeered the United States without the public being aware. It is obvious that the US Constitution is eroding under the influence of the Jesuits, the crack troops of the Vatican. Breach of Amendment 6 NDAA Indefinite Detention Act without trial is an extension of the Patriot Act. Crafted by Jesuit Georgetown University educated Professor Yet Din. The assassination of foreign nationals as well as US citizens abroad by predator drones, is also a breach of the Sixth Amendment. Chuck Hagel, Leon Panetta and Donald Rumsfeld have attended Jesuit universities and all have held the position of US Secretary of Defense. The mighty and widely ramified Order of Saint Ignatius was powerful enough to procure by its interest far greater advantages to individuals than could any other corporation, fraternity or even secular power. Jesuit General Jean-Baptiste Janssens Breach of Amendment 4 Spying on US citizens without warrant Former NSA Director General Michael Hayden and incumbent NSA General Keith B. Alexander are both Roman Catholics and tools of the Jesuits. General Michael Hayden was also educated at a Jesuit university. Revelations from Edward Snowden reveal just how widespread this illegal surveillance extends itself. Many nations are holding conferences on how to counteract this problem. Public outrage has been expressed in places like Germany, but it seems that some German government departments, like BND, have implicit involvement with the NSA. Many governments portray disapproval publicly to the media, but secretly aid and abet US spy agencies. Breach of Amendment 2, the right to keep and bear arms. Michael Quigley, educated by the Jesuits, sponsored an amendment to the Patriot Act prohibiting the sales of weapons to people on the FBI terrorist watch list. The trouble is that the FBI now regards some protesters and independent journalists as a threat to national security, therefore deemed terrorists. The First Amendment is on the Roman Catholic Jesuit hit list and is of supreme importance to the Vatican. Amendment 1 Congress